For as long as I can remember, there's been two kinds of people in the first-person shooter world. People who have the ability to use sound to their advantage, and people who can't or simply don't see the value that proper sound localization provides you. Now, some people swear by virtual surround sound, expensive 7.1 surround gaming headphones, complicated custom EQ settings or amplifiers, expensive sound cards, and the like. In my personal experience, accurately identifying and locating sound is the most important factor to my success in nearly every engagement in any first-person shooter, and it's a whole lot simpler than many people think. This video aims to explain how sound localization works, both in real life and in video games like Escape from Tarkov, and offer some tips and tricks so that you can get the most out of your current audio setup. Now, in order for anything that I'm going to be discussing here to make sense to you, you need to at least have a basic understanding of what sound is. So here's the TLDR. Sounds are vibrations or waves of pressure through some medium, such as water or air. Without vibrations, you have no sound. Without a medium, you have no sound. Our ears work to gather these waves, funnel them down our ear canal to our eardrums, causing them to vibrate in a very specific way that's eventually interpreted by our brains as the sounds that we hear. So there are three primary ways that we both consciously and unconsciously utilize sound to localize sources of sound in 3D space. Volume, time, and our anatomy. So all other things being equal, perceived sounds will get louder as they get closer to you. Sounds that are louder in one ear relative to the other are in most cases closer to that ear. So the magnitude of this volume difference between your ears can help inform how far to your left or right a sound source is located. The second sound localization technique uses what's known as temporal cues, temporal meaning time. If a sound is coming from one side of your head, those vibrations traveling through the air at the speed of sound, by the way, will reach your ears at slightly different times. Now, while this difference in time might be far too small for you to perceive consciously, our brains can actually be quite adept at noticing this difference and interpreting it in the same way that we handle volume differences. If a sound hits one ear slightly before the other, that's pretty good evidence that the source of the sound is closer to that ear that received it first. The final piece of the localization puzzle is what fills in the gaps left by the previous two, vertical localization. Our ears have evolved these wacky shapes for an interesting reason. Our brains have evolved and developed to be able to use some crazy algorithms that provide additional context about where sounds are located simply based on how the sound waves interact with all the unique folds and crevices of your ears. How we perceive the differences in frequency of the different sounds, known as spectral cues, are the primary driving force behind our ability to localize vertical sounds. Now, I would highly recommend an amazing video from one of the best channels on YouTube, Smarter Every Day, where he discusses this phenomenon and shows you how you can actually throw off someone's ability to localize vertical sounds by doing something as simple as putting a little bit of silly putty into the folds of their ears. This effectively alters the anatomy of their ears, the anatomy that their brain has become so familiar with their entire life. My favorite fun fact that I learned from this video was that dogs are not as good as humans when it comes to using spectral cues. I'm guessing it's probably due to the anatomy of their ears. So instead, they cheat a little bit and tilt their heads to the side in order to get temporal cues when they otherwise wouldn't have any. Okay, so how do we use what we just learned here and apply it towards sound localization in video games? So historically, most first-person shooter games, including Escape from Tarkov, utilize stereo audio. Stereo audio, or 2.1, uses two audio channels, a left and a right channel, and the point one stands for a subwoofer. Now you might have a speaker on the left and right of your television, or this would be both of the speakers in your left and right parts of your headphones. So now none of the video games that I've personally tested use temporal cues in their sound systems. Uh, no matter where the sounds were located relative to the player, 
the sounds always hit both channels left and right at the exact same time. Now, perhaps the difference is so small that I'm unable to measure it using my tools, but honestly, I doubt it. Now, I doubt it because so much information can be gained simply by altering the volume of the sounds in the left and right channels as the sound sources move relative to the player's ears. Here are some examples of me localizing sound sources coming from different directions simply by using volume cues with simple stereo audio. Hey, cocksuckers! Please tell me that fucking got him. I'm cheating. Okay, so what about sounds that are in front or behind you? Now, in my opinion, front and back sounds are easily distinguishable by using the same sort of trick that dogs use. Turning your head to the left or right will move the direction of the sound so that it's no longer directly in front or behind you. So based on where the perceived sound seems to move, that'll tell us where the sound is located. So if a sound is located behind us and we turn our heads to the right, we'll be turning our right ear towards the sound. So the perceived volume should increase in our right ear. Alternatively, if the sound was in front of us, we'd hear the volume increase in our left ear. Now, I'm often asked all the time, either in videos or on stream, why I turn my player's body or use the free look feature in the middle of combat situations. And this is actually exactly the reason. I'm trying to give myself more information about an ambiguous sound source. If I hear something, if I turn my head a little bit to the left and right, I can get a visual, uh, an audio visual sort of indication of where the sound is coming from as it moves between my left and right channels of my headphones. Oh, look at him, goddamn pussy! It's behind me. Now, one of the biggest criticisms of Escape from Tarkov's audio, as well as many other first-person shooter games, is how well they handle vertical sounds. And because there's only two channels to work with, one for the left and one for the right, there's really nothing we can do with volume or timing that can inform us about vertical location. So how do other games handle this? So some alternatives are 5.1 or 7.1 surround systems. Now 5.1 and 7.1 don't just have two audio channels. They have five and seven respectively. Again, point one being the subwoofer. These specially placed speakers or headphone drivers can be used to provide additional spatial context for sounds in video games, but only if the game supports it. If the game does not support it, just like Escape from Tarkov does not currently, then enabling surround sound is not going to help you localize sound. Surround sound systems simply cannot provide more context or information about the location of sounds if the input is merely stereo. So if the game you're playing doesn't support it, I would very much highly recommend that you turn off 5.1 or 7.1 surround, virtual surround, anything like that in your Windows settings, in your um, audio settings of the game, um, or your sound card, anything like that. So speaking of virtual sound or other technologies like Steam Audio or HRTF, they're a bit more complicated and I don't want to spend too much time talking about them, but these systems attempt to mimic the experience of surround audio and can even work for some people using stereo headphones, assuming that the sound source was designed and recorded specifically for it. Now, games that don't have these settings built in or games that provide stereo audio output simply will not benefit from these technologies and can in many ways reduce the quality of the sound and spatial awareness that you'll have. Simple, unfiltered stereo audio and a decent pair of stereo headphones is all you need. There's no need to pay all sorts of money for fancy gaming headphones, epic sound cards, or mess with special EQ settings or virtual surround software. Using a pair of knockoff Apple earbuds that I paid less than $5 for, plugged directly into my gaming PC's headphone jack without any special EQ settings or software to help me, I have absolutely no problem localizing sound. Attention! Attention! 
I am going to be playing Factory using knockoff Apple earbuds. Just to demonstrate, you do not need gaming headphones, surround sound, 27 driver, $400 gaming headphones to localize sound in Tarkov. Thank you. About to peak. One above me to the left. So I'll leave you with three tips and tricks that uh, you can use to help you with your sound localization strategies. Tip number one context clues. My four dollar headset. Context clues coupled with map knowledge can be hugely invaluable in moments of ambiguous sound. Sometimes you'll hear a sound that you can't tell whether it's above or below you, but if you know, for example, that above you is uh, wood floors and below you has metal floors or gravel or something like that, you can use that additional information to inform where the target is most likely located. Now, just be aware that. Some places in Tarkov are notoriously bad when it comes to sounds. The first one that comes to mind is the three-story dorms on Customs. You literally cannot trust where any of the sounds are coming from. It might sound like someone's literally right next to you on top of you when they're two floors below you or above you or vice versa. And other times you won't hear anybody coming up the stairs if you're halfway up them or not. But the normal audio stereo in Tarkov is great, all things considered, but it definitely isn't without its bugs and its quirks, so just be aware. Tip number two is use active headphones. I personally find wearing any of the active headsets in the game more important than, honestly, body armor. My experience has been that I have a much better chance of surviving an encounter if I hear an enemy and wait for them to leave me an opening to attack them by surprise, killing them before they have a chance even to return fire, than if I'm a, a juggernaut tank, deaf, can't hear anything or see anything, and I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, hoping that I can outlive their shots and kill them before they kill me. For most of the early and mid game after the wipe, I find myself wearing contacts, preferably swordants, when I can get them, even without a helmet. Now, I find the additional awareness that I'm afforded with the active headphones for comparably cheaper price worth more than the additional protection I get from helmets, especially without face shields. Uh, and now it seems in that point 12, they've made noticeable changes to how the headphones sound. So I'll likely be doing an update to my headphone review video soon. Now until then, check out my original one that I did last year to get an idea for how the active headsets work and what they do. And finally, tip number three is use the sound localization training tool that I've developed that will be coming out soon for the Tarkov Battle Buddy mobile app. First on iOS, then eventually on Android. An update's going to be coming within the next week. Again, Android's going to be coming shortly. That includes a new feature that I designed that helps you learn how to localize sound by moving your character's perspective, letting you practice hunting for the source of a sound and to get real-time visual feedback on how you're doing. This training tool requires headphones. Normal phone earbuds work just fine. Now, once you start the test, a tone will play randomly around your 360-degree field of hearing, and you're going to swipe left and right on the phone just like you would do with your mouse on your mouse pad for your PC to turn your character around left and right. Now you should hear the sound appear to move left and right around you as your character turns. Now once it sounds like the sound is directly in front of you, which is basically means that the volume is going to be equal in both ears, you're going to want to press the guess button and see if you're right. You can even flip a little helper switch to turn on a visual indicator of where the sound source is located relative to where your character is looking to get a feel for it if you're having trouble. Now, I'm actually really proud of this feature. This was the first time I ever found a unique and practical use for trigonometry in all my years of doing software development. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and, uh, you know, I could potentially be adding, you know, different difficulty levels, maybe make more of a mini game out of it in the future. Let me know what you guys think. So at the end of the day, 
you should use whatever sound settings, EQ settings, headphones, or whatever you prefer. If you swear by it, feel like you can't play without something, by all means, use it. Just know that the actual realistic limitations on the technology, the millions of dollars in marketing hype around it all, and try not to be fooled into thinking you need anything fancy to be able to master sound localization in first-person shooters like Escape from Tarkov. Luckily for all of us, you don't. But unfortunately, that means that you don't really have any excuses. So get to practicing, and good luck out there, fam. We'll see you later.